The race to the White House seems to be tighter than ever before. And with just days left before the 5th November election, analysts say panic seems to be setting in within the Democratic ranks, with Trump gaining ground in recent days. Two months ago, Kamala Harris was crowned as the Democratic presidential nominee at a jubilant national convention in Chicago. For thousands of party faithful, she was the electoral savior, replacing an 81-year-old incumbent who seemed incapable of defeating Dom Donald Trump and winning another term. But now, as election day looms and anxieties grow, it seems there are growing concerns within the party ranks. There is no doubt that Harris enjoyed a surge of momentum and an instant and significant boost in the polls compared to President Joe Biden, who was lagging far behind Trump. Yet it appears Harris was winning back those who normally vote Democratic anyway, but who were worried about Biden and his age. For victory, Harris needs to attract voters from beyond the Democrats' base while holding together the fragile coalition that helped Biden win in 2020. The latest polls show a race that has tightened in recent weeks and is now essentially a tie. Worrying for Democrats is that Trump has gained ground in the crucial blue wall states that offer Harris her clearest path to victory. Michigan, Wisconsin and Pennsylvania, as well as among black and Latino voters. Although the race is neck and neck in the key swing states, poll numbers are within the margin of error. In other words, they could be wrong, but Harris's criticism of Trump, her Republican opponent, has become much darker in the last few days. At the convention, she laughed at Trump dismissing him as an unserious man and veered. Now, she's calling him a fascist and increasingly unhinged and unstable. Harris's original message of wanting to bring joy has turned to one of fear. Warning of what she says are the dangerous consequences of a second Trump term. Polling suggests Harris is likely to win the popular vote, but that will not be enough. She has to, we, she has to win key battleground states to win in the Electoral College. And let's say the reservations uh, many voters still have about Harris, a woman they feel they still don't know enough about, are pretty strong. Harris has a very particular problem in Michigan, which has the highest concentration of Arab American voters in the United States. Biden won the state in 2020 by just over 150,000 votes, but his administration's inability to rein in Israel's attacks in Gaza and Lebanon has deeply hurt the party standing amongst the 300,000 Arab Americans living here. Harris, Biden's vice president, is being held equally responsible. Some young Arab Americans have in fact told reporters, we believe there has to be accountability for all the lives lost. We do not forgive the Democrats for it and we will not be scared into voting for them. Harris has spoken about her anger over the suffering in Gaza and Lebanon, but those voters want her to say she will refuse to supply weapons to Israel if they are used in strikes that kill civilians. In Michigan, the working class and union vote could prove pivotal too. The most important swing state is Pennsylvania because it has the large, largest number of votes in the all-important electoral college. With polls deadlocked, both sides have poured hundreds of millions into advertising to reach undecided voters in the state. Also, a very large number of voters care the most about the economy and it's an area where Trump seems to enjoy a significant advantage over his opponent. No matter how much Democrats point to rosy job numbers or economic growth, people simply felt better off four years ago before record high inflation cut into monthly budgets. Harris is focusing on women in the Pennsylvania suburbs, especially those who may usually vote Republican but are turned off by Trump's rhetoric and behavior. Recent Harris events where she has appeared with moderate Republicans like former Congresswoman Liz Cheney are aimed at persuading this group that it's preferable to vote Democratic even if you don't agree with Harris's policies just to keep Trump out of the White House. Harris holds a very strong lead amongst female voters across the nation in an election with the country's biggest ever gender divide. She has not campaigned on the historic nature of her candidacy, almost never mentioning that if elected she would be the first female president. But she does stress her support for women's reproductive rights. Trump boasts of appointing the Supreme Court justices who ended the nation's right to an abortion in place for over 50 years. But he knows that the very strict abortion bans that some states introduced afterwards are deeply unpopular, with a large number of voters forcing him to walk a careful line.
In Arizona, one of the two battleground states in America's West, there is a proposition on the ballot to decide whether to enshrine abortion rights in the state constitution, effectively overturning the current law that forbids terminating a pregnancy after 15 weeks. The hope for Democrats is that women in the 10 states with such abortion ballot measures are driven to the polls by that issue and while there, cast a presidential vote for Kamala Harris. Arizona polls suggest voters are likely to support the proposition by a wide margin, but that may not translate into votes for Harris. As many as one in five people say they plan to vote to guarantee abortion rights in Arizona, but at the same time cast a ballot for Trump. Neither Harris nor Trump know who will be the next president of the United States, nor do any of the pollsters or political pundits. But it appears Kamala Harris has not been able to sustain the excitement and optimism that she generated when she first became a presidential candidate. She now has to slog it out, fighting for every vote to stand a chance of breaking what the last woman to run for U.S. president, Hillary Clinton, called the highest and hardest glass ceiling. Meanwhile, Kamala Harris bossed in the support of rock legend Bruce Springsteen, entertainer Tyler Perry and former President Barack Obama on Thursday at a rally that drew thousands in the battleground state of Georgia. Seeking to excite supporters in a state that could help determine the winner of the 2024 election, the U.S. Vice President and her high-profile endorsers urged the crowd to take advantage of early voting and to reject her Republican opponent, Donald Trump. Harris said... We understand we have an opportunity before us to turn the page on the fear and divisiveness that have characterized our politics for a decade because of Donald Trump. Please vote early. Springsteen, before strumming Land of Hope and Dreams, declared that Harris is running to be the 47th president of the United States. Donald Trump, Donald Trump is running to be an American tyrant. He does not understand this country, its history or what it means to be deeply American. Obama seized on recent interviews in which John Kelly, the Republican nominee's former White House chief of staff, described the 45th president as an aspiring dictator and said he had expressed a desire to be served by generals like those who surrounded Adolf Hitler. Trump has denied the report, saying, I never said that. Obama warned, and I quote, just because he acts goofy does not mean his presidency would not be dangerous. I want to explain that in politics, a good rule of thumb is don't say you want to do anything like Hitler. But it is useful because it gives us a window into how Donald Trump thinks. Obama's return to center stage is raising the question of whether 12 years after his last election win, he has the political muscle to take the once and possibly future president down. Analysts say Obama is feeling the fierce urgency of now again. The 44th president is logging more miles on the campaign trail than at any point since leaving the White House nearly eight years ago. He's implored voters from Pittsburgh to Toussaint to Las Vegas to back Kamala Harris and by the week's uh, end, the campaign blitz will have touched down in all seven top battleground states. Obama said, we do not need to see what an older, loonier Donald Trump looks like with no guardrails. America is ready to turn the page. We are ready for a better story. Observers say America's first black president, who once hailed his generation of voters as a people of improbable hope, is sounding far less optimistic as Americans prepare to render a verdict for the third straight time on Donald Trump. Obama's re-emergence on the campaign trail for Kamala Harris comes as he recognizes that his own legacy is at stake. The controlled fury of his speech on Thursday night and his intense engagement this week shows that the November election is more than merely a race for Kamala Harris. It's a battle that will show whether anyone is still listening to Barack Obama. It's been said that uh, Obama's legacy is on the line in this election and it is true in a new term. The man who once told swooning crowds that we are the change that we seek delivered a far more pragmatic pitch, warning, sometimes I think we expect so much that we end up disappointed when everything's not immediately solved. Obama's caustic roasts of Trump, his gift for framing the stakes of an election and the way he has made a far more compelling case for Harris's election than even she has managed for herself, shows that his political skills are undiminished. That's helped his fans to accept Kamala Harris, only three years younger than Obama at 60, as the next recipient of his torch. Kamala Harris is facing a far more challenging environment, though, than then-Senator Barack Obama encountered in 2008. He was the insurgent after an eight-year Republican presidency marred by George W. Bush's failures in Iraq and New Orleans, which left the country desperate for change. 
This year's Democratic nominee is an incumbent in an unpopular administration. Obama's young voters intoxicated by hope in 2008 are entering middle age with the same struggles with high grocery prices and mortgage rates that Trump's voters are experiencing. And while Bruce Springsteen is America's poet of the working class, many blue-collar voters have deserted Democrats in recent elections for Trump's populist GOP. And the former president is about to be upstaged by the biggest political star in his family. Former First Lady Michelle Obama, who's become a female icon, will campaign with Kamala Harris on Saturday in Michigan. At this point, marquee events are more about driving a party's voters to the polls than changing minds. Meanwhile, Donald Trump, campaigning in the border swing state of Arizona on Thursday, called America a garbage can because of immigration policies under the Biden administration. He said, we like a garbage can. It's the first time I've ever said that. And every time I come up and talk about what they've done to our country, I get angry. First time I've ever said garbage can, but it is a very accurate description at this point, he said. Candidates and their surrogates for both presidential campaigns are blitzing swing states like Arizona in the final two weeks before Election Day. The Republican vice presidential candidate, J.D. Vance, held two campaign rallies in Arizona earlier this week. Joe Biden and the former president, Barack Obama, are set to visit this week, as is Tim Walz, the Democratic vice presidential pick.